How's it going YouTube? Raj here. I hope you guys are doing well. Tonight I'm going to be doing a review on Dior Homme Intense, obviously a fragrance from Dior. This particular version I'm talking about was released in 2011. Top notes are lavender, mid notes of iris, um, ambrette and uh, pear, base notes of vetiver and cedar. So this is the bottle here and for me this is this is a just a beautiful fragrance. I really do like it. Um, I think it's you could call it a modern masterpiece. It's miles away from what else is out there in the mainstream market. Dior have taken a risk here. They've pushed the boundaries. They have well, I say they. Francois Demachy, the perfumer behind this, has really created an exceptional uh, piece of work here. Um, Dior in their online really take select ingredients. Um, good quality ones, not adding in hundreds of notes into one fragrance, just stripping it back and just doing it so well. And I really think they are the masters of that. It definitely shows in the online. Um, Dorm Intense for me is a fragrance to be worn in evenings, but I have worn it casually. I have worn this to work. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I just prefer it in those evenings, and specifically spring or summer evenings. Um, not when it's too hot, um, it becomes a little bit too loud when it becomes hot, but those types of evenings, autumn during the day, I don't feel this is a winter fragrance, not for me anyway. I feel in the winter the performance suffers a little bit, um, but overall I get really good performance. Longevity I feel is, is good but not amazing, I get about 8 to 10 hours. I wouldn't mind a little bit more, but maybe I'm being a little bit too demanding. Uh, projection, especially when your body warms up, is pretty good, and you're going to leave a central, and you're going to be, you're going to be noticed. Um, do your arm intense. So, wow, let's just get into the scent. I don't feel it's uh, it's it develops a huge amount, and I don't feel that this is hugely different from Dior Homme. Um, but I actually prefer it to Dior Homme. So, in the top, there is this. It's kind of like a muted lavender note. Um, nice and herbal. Um, I do like it, but it's it's in a cocoon. It's it's a, in a, it's surrounded by this slightly powdery iris note in there, kind of buttery smooth. Um, a fantastic cocoa powder note in there. I'm not going to say chocolate, dark chocolate. I don't get any chocolatey feeling. I get this kind of powder mixed in with a kind of warm milky accord. Uh, maybe like a like a hot chocolate drink. But the powder necessary hasn't really been dissolved into the milk. It's kind of sitting on top of this drink. Um, I feel the cocoa is just so beautiful and it is really sort of seductive a type, seductive type fragrance. Um, that's why I feel it's suited for an evening wear, depending on what you're doing, obviously. Um, and the thing is, anything with cocoa immediately has my attention. I bought several fragrances which have this kind of cocoa accord. But for me, this is um, probably the best of all. It's funny that they don't in, it, it mention it in the notes because it's really prominent. Um, it's an accord, obviously. It could be a combination of this iris mixed in with the pear and ambre. It's all merging together. You know, sometimes three notes put together can create a fourth or a kind of a different accord. A fourth note, you could say. Um, so as the fragrance develops, this iris starts to kind of peak up a little bit and start to almost overshadow the cocoa, almost. Um, it's definitely a little bit in your face. Um, I do like that about it, but it never becomes over, um, kind of too powerful. Um, this is why I feel, this is why I like the Dior Homme range, because, you know, Dior, the original, uh, Dior Homme Cologne, uh, Dior Homme Sport, each note is done so well and they all play their part at different stages of the fragrance and they're all given time to shine. Um, perfectly blended from Francois Demachy, the perfumer behind this, you know, credit where credit's, credit's due. There's nothing else like this in the mainstream market and that's maybe one of the reasons why I like this so much. What else is there to say about this fragrance? In the dry down you get this um, mild cedar. Um, if I'm honest, if I didn't read about cedar in the, in the note breakdown, I maybe wouldn't have guessed it if I'm honest. It is slightly woody, but it's this cocoa which is starting to kind of dissolve a little bit and be turned into something a little bit more slightly smoky, slightly woody, but it's very, very faint. And it's only something that you notice when you get, you know, put your nose up to your, 
up to your skin. It's not going to be the scent that is projecting off your skin, basically. Only if you're kind of analysing it in, in detail. But it's quite a simple fragrance in in that respect, and that and that's sometimes not a bad thing. Um, but I think it's a great thing here because again, they've just taken simple ingredients and blended them masterfully. Um, I wish I got a little bit more development though, I would say that, I wish I did get a little bit more and I wish this was a little bit more different than Dior Homme but I'm being a little bit over critical and at the end of the day you know, I've, I've sold many mainstream fragrances, I've sold many niche fragrances to say that at the same time um, over the past you know year and a half but not once, not once have I thought about selling this um, it's definitely a modern day masterpiece uh, masterpiece, yeah, but I'm not going to give it a perfect score. I wouldn't mind it a little bit more longevity. I know a lot of people talk about amazing performance, and but I don't really get that. I get good, um, but not excellent. So overall, I'm going to give this a rating of nine and a half. You know, it's 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 one step away from perfection. Um, maybe it is perfect. Maybe I'm being overcritical. But um, you know, whether you like this fragrance or not. And this is the testament of actually a good fragrance and actually you could say a good perfume or a good house is when you try their fragrances or when you try a fragrance you may not like it you may not want to buy it but you may not dislike it also but you will respect it and i don't think you could sort of look at diorum intense and not have a respect for it for what it does for what it for the boundaries it has pushed in the men's mainstream market for the ingredients that are used the way it's blended you may not want to buy a bottle, you may not want to wear it every single day, even if you have a bottle, but you've got to respect it. Something I thought of recently when I was thinking about um, Frederick Marl and his Edition de Parfum line. I actually don't have any fragrances from that house anymore. I've had about two or three over the past, but none of them really work for me. But at the same time, I respect that house a lot because their creations are really good. They just don't work on my skin um, as well as I, I would like them to. So what do you think about this fragrance, guys? I know it's very popular, but I'm sure there must be some of you guys who aren't so keen, and what are your reasons for not liking it? If you do love it, why do you love it? Where do you wear this? You know, Have you ever worn it in summer evenings? Because I actually think it shines in summer evenings. Um, always great to hear from you guys, and um, I'll see you soon. Bye.